All right, so let's, um, I'm going to just quickly pop this on. Um, so good evening, everybody. How you doing? Oh, that's typical. Um, let me just move this so then we can get going. Should work now. All right, good evening, everybody. How you doing? Um, let's have a look. What attendees have we got here so far? So we've got Annie, we've got Nick, we've got Donna, we've got Celia, we've got Matthew, we've got Craig, we've got Kate, we've got Elaine Marie, we've got uh, Therese, we've got Ellis, and we've got Jody. How you doing, guys? So um, first things first, before we get into everything what i'd just like to do is if i could request if you wouldn't mind if you head to the elite network community and i've posted a a nice picture of chris and i that we've just worked out was about 18 months ago and if you can see if you're in the elite network community um which hopefully you are then you can head to a picture it'll be chris and i the uh the title at the top is the official wheels webinar with chris hill thread and that's what we're going to use as the live q a thread then the reason being is if we post all of the live questions um in demio then when the webinars finished we lose all of those comments and there might be some really great feedback and some links that we post and we don't want to lose all that so we want to keep it in the community so you can access it anytime so if you'd be uh if you could be kind enough to just first of all just head straight to that post and just comment that you can hear me okay first of all so we know that at least we know that the sound's working. Chris and I have been testing this for the last 15 minutes or so, and we can hear each other. But I want to make sure that you can hear me. And in a minute, you'll be able to hear Chris as well. So first of all, if you wouldn't mind doing that, we'll just check that everything is working, which hopefully it will be. I can hear things pinging off already. Um, so Jody saying she can hear us. So hopefully if Jody can hear us, that means everybody else can, which will be great. So just let us know a few more of you. If you can just comment that you can hear us. And if there is anybody by chance that has joined the webinar that isn't in the Elite Network community, then if you could just comment in the uh, in, in the box on Demio and I'll send you the link now. In fact, I'll send it anyway, just in case there is anybody. And then we can look at getting rocking and rolling. Um, where is there we go? The button that I'm looking for uh wonderful that's what i want and we're going to share that there so just in case there is any of you that aren't in the elite network community already which i believe most of you are then just head to that uh link i've just posted in demio now so you can see exactly that so um so a few other people can hear us okay and then we'll get cracking so celia can hear us ls can hear us jody can hear us which is all good all right, so Craig can hear us. Fantastic. So, guys, um, well, look, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to have my my good friend Chris Hill um, come and speaking to us. So, Chris is going to be telling us a lot more about himself in a minute. But I had the pleasure of, of first meeting Chris about 18 months ago when we were both on a mastermind together. We're on a both on a, a mastermind, so I had the pleasure of spending a whole day with Chris on many a month and, uh, and and got to know him pretty well. And and he's on to do some incredible things. From seeing Chris at the beginning of his journey to where he is now and what he's doing, it really, really, really is absolutely epic. Um, and he's going to be telling us all about exactly that so i guess with without further ado what i'm without further ado should i say what i'm going to do is i'm going to introduce chris hopefully you can see him okay i'm just going to play about with this so that um you can see us so that's another thing i just want to check actually um can you see us um where's the so let me just see start sharing is very odd um can you just let us know if you can see us as well please guys so you can i know you said you can hear us but i've just realized when i've gone off a particular screen um oh good old technology working at his best 
Okay, so Jodie, you can see. Jodie, can you see me and Chris, or can you just see Chris, or can you just see me, or could you see my screen that I was sharing a minute ago? That's yep, yeah, Nick can see both of us. Okay, cool. So we can see both of us. For some reason, I can't see Chris all of a sudden, which is really odd. Chris, can you see me? Definitely here, and I can see you, buddy. So how the hell have I done this then? Um, I am backstage somehow. So how do I get out of backstage? Ah, there we go. I'm there. Fantastic. I was playing around in backstage. I was behind the scenes. Um, okay, cool. So we're we're here now. Um, for some, oh, you didn't see. Me. So this, I'm just going to share this with everybody so everybody can see this before we get going. This is, I think, the first day that I met Chris. Um, oh, I'm not having much luck with technology. There we go. This was the, the day that I met Chris way back when. There he is. Both of us in grey. I think someone actually commented that day, if I remember correctly. It was Dee commented that we were both wearing grey. Um, <laughs> I don't know what she meant by that, but uh, she was a colour artist. And uh, apparently we were both wearing grey. We looked very grey that day. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so that's that's Chris and I with his book, Get Your Life Back, which I'm sure he'll be telling us more about in just, just a minute, guys. Um, so... I'm going to stop sharing my screen and introduce the one, the only, Chris Hill, everybody. Round of applause for Chris Hill, everybody. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> All right. How yeah, you doing? Good. Thanks for having us on, Will. Uh, Absolute uh, pleasure. I always struggle to be quiet for that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so let, let's get started. So for those that, that don't know too much about you, Chris, um, let us know. So, um, so Basically, I'm an, I'm an addiction expert. That's, I think that's what my title is. Um, but I, I basically help people overcome all kinds of things. So, you know, this, this talk is going to be about sugar, overeating, weight loss. But I help people overcome, you know, addictive substances like smoking, drinking, recreational drugs. I also help people overcome like anxiety and stress and depression. Um, I work a lot in with mental health, so I, I volunteer services to NHS, um, and I do a lot of work with the homeless. So, um, you know, for the last couple of years, we've been doing some really big um, homeless runs where we've been distributing like rucksacks and food um, out to the homeless at the winter time. So, um, so I'm quite busy. From from when I first met you, Will, it was just at the beginning of my book launch. So um and yeah that 18 months has just flown by you know i said to will was it about a year ago he said no it's like 18 months ago so i just i don't know where that's um gone but i mean since we met there i've, I've you know flown around the world i've been over to america i spoke at nih which is their national institute for health i've spoke in the european parliament campaigning about sugar addiction and over here in our british government so and if, if you could have told me that then, Will, I probably wouldn't have believed you. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's been a really incredible journey. Um, but the best thing about it is that we're, we're changing lives. So we're changing lives of <clears throat> people that are suffering, people that are suffering, be it people that are overweight, suffering with addictions, or just with mental health issues. I mean, the other day I actually got to meet Prince Charles um, because I was doing some work up in Halifax and he was visiting um, and they actually asked me to come and meet him personally. So, and since that meeting, I've been invited to the Prince's Trust, and now we're talking about, um, you know, rolling out a training program for sixty thousand youngsters across the country. So, so it's really, really incredible journey. Uh, you know, I think what it is, you you put a purpose to your life, you put an intention out there, and um, just like you know, Will, this is you know just exactly what you teach. Um, you, 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 and it happens, you know, the universe or whatever you want to describe it, you know, rearranges itself and, and it guides you to, to the goals that you're, that you're setting. I've only got a little dog, he's only, but he does bark a little bit. So. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So, like I say, I've, I've had the pleasure of seeing your journey and, and like I say, evolve from a whole host of different people and you've, you've, if I'm right saying that was it Russell Brand was your book sent to Russell Brand so, or so, yeah I mean since well? yeah the book launch I've met so many celebrities um you know I've had the pleasure of meeting Russell a few times now um I actually do some work with his dad 
Um, and, you know, there's numerous of uh, celebrities that I've been introduced to. Some I've actually done work with. Um, and, yeah, it's just, it's really, really coming along. We, you know, I think if you can see behind me, I, we're running retreats now over in Hartford in Essex. Um, we are, you know, doing, we've got large seminars that are going on now. Um, and, uh, you know, I've got online programs, you know, we do like one-to-one -one help. It's just, I don't know, like from, from that meeting with you 18 months ago, this was, you know, I was just running, you know, help and support groups, you know, just helping people with drink and drug problems. But since then, it's just really, really evolved. And, you know, my purpose now is really just to share a message, get a, a message sent, you know, not just in this country, um, but right around the world that there is a solution, you know, whether you suffer with addictions or you don't, whether you suffer with anxiety or stress or, you know, or like this talk is, is going to be around food, overeating, you know, putting weight on. How do you how do you lose weight without, you know, depriving yourself? How do you lose weight without, you know, you know, like everybody else is still eating cakes and biscuits and, and, and you're missing it? You know, how do you overcome that? And. You know, everything I teach is about the mind. You know, people believe, oh, you're the addiction expert, you're this, you're that. You know, te te technically, yeah, that, that's, you know, the title they've given me. But what I actually do is I teach people a model of life. I teach people how does your mind work and how does your body work? I, what are these internal mechanisms that are driving us to do the things that we're doing? And, and once you understand these internal mechanisms, then all of a sudden you can take control of it. And, and that's really what I do. I give people back control of their lives to be able to make the decisions that they really want and not be punished. See, every time you make a decision that goes against what your mind and body want, then all of a sudden you get punished. You get punished with bad emotions, bad feelings, bad thoughts. And then when you're in such a low place and you've tried so hard, like using willpower, we give in. In the end, we just go, I just don't want to live like this. I don't want to live with this misery. I'd rather use or pick up and get some sort of pleasure. I know it's going to come with the bad, but I don't want to live with a, a total misery. You know, I don't want to live a life like that. And who does? You know, this is why we tend to go back. We diet and then we go back. We diet and we, this is that yo-yo thing. But, but if you could actually understand what, like, processed sugars are, what, you know, addictive substances are, if you could actually go back into the mind and untick the boxes that said this is pleasurable, because this is the problem. Our mind is a very sophisticated, you know, computer system, really. If you, if you know, I know it's not a computer system, but that's that's the mechanics of it. You know, once it wires to something, once it's programmed to something, it cannot rewire itself. It doesn't know that something that was pleasurable is now not pleasurable. Now it's causing us pain, but the mind doesn't know how to rewire itself. And that's what I do. I teach people a really simple process, simple process that allows them to go back into their mind, untick a box, and then once you untick the box, the mind will lose, you know, on an emotional level, you will lose the want and need to pick up. So, you know, I was a sugar addict. I didn't even know I was a sugar addict. I was, you know, probably a sugar addict from, from the age of one. I don't know. My earliest memory was, was sweets, isn't it? So, you know, but what I'd done after that, you know, from, from growing up as a kid, I went on to use other substances. So, so you know, maybe, you know, my first addiction was sugar, but I wouldn't have recognized it because sugar tastes so nice and it's so sweet. And why would you ever question it? But then, of course, I would be introduced to caffeine. You know, my mum one day would, you know, yeah, oh, son, there's a cup of tea. And, I, you know, it's disgusting, mum. I don't want that. And, you know, she'd go, yeah, oh, there's two spoonfuls of sugar. Now try it again. And, oh, yeah, that's better. And that... And now I'm a caffeine addict, yeah? So, but again, my mum wouldn't have understood addiction. Nobody, not even, to be honest, not even today, you know, I talk in, you know, high-level meetings, be it in government or, you know, other countries, and, and they still don't recognise sugar as an addictive substance. It, it's, it's like, you know, there's the powers above, the powers be, you know, these, you know, sugar companies, food corporations, they just don't want you to understand the truth, and they've got a lot of power you know, in, in governments and stuff. So when you raise the question about sugar is addictive, you know, you're quickly, you know, ushered down a bit, you know, no, 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 we don't talk about addiction. Let's just talk about calories and stuff like that. That's how they talk. So, um, but, you know, but we know, everybody knows that when you start to eat a bit of chocolate, 
you just can't stop when you when you eat that cream bun you, you know you just want another one when you have that bit of cheesecake you you know is it rude that i could ask for another one you know we understand the want and the need we understand how powerful you know these these foods are and you know you eat a savory dinner a lovely savory dinner but you're just eating it to get through to the pudding you know what you really want <laughs> you know if you could have start a main you'd, you'd have it all but you know society says no you know we've got to be you know respectable in society so you've got to eat normal food but then you get your pleasure so and you know and i'm not t trying to take people's pleasure away i understand you know how good they taste you know even though i don't consume it i still look at it and i still i understand how wonderful it is but i know that once you start you can't stop and and even when we're not consuming these sugary products there's internally there's a want and a need see see you know food isn't addictive as such but when you extract sugar and you you, you add some chemicals and you refine it you know, it becomes a highly addictive substance. And, and the food companies understand it because that's why they put it into the products. And, and when they put it into the products, when you, when you, you know, you put it onto your palate, immediately what you get is, is um, a chemical release of dopamine. So there's a chemical release that makes you feel good, you know, and it's immediate. And it, and it happens every single time you eat a bit of chocolate. It's, it's, it's guaranteed. So, you know, and so then food becomes our comfort. It's our friend, you know, in good times and bad times. It's always there for us. But the problem with it is it's a poison to our body. Now, our body can't tell us it's a poison because the body can't speak to us. And so what we have is an organ. It's called the pancreas, yeah? And so what the pancreas does, because we can't digest these high levels of sugar, the pancreas pumps in insulin. And, you know, the insulin comes to get hold of the sugar, but all the insulin can do to the sugar, it turns it into fat cells. And then all of a sudden, what do you do with a fat cell? Well, it starts to store it around our body. You know, and then all of a sudden we start to put weight on and, and you know, we can't work it out. We're eating healthy diets. Um, but yeah, we have a little bit of sugar. But what we don't understand is, is the sugar turns into fat. See, you know, we've been lied to for, for you know, probably 40 years or something that, you know, whoever came out with it, they, they said fat is bad and sugar is good. You know, let's take all the fat out of the food and let's repl replace it with the sugar yeah, because we don't want anyone to get ill. But, you know, wh where people made that decision, the exact opposite has happened because instead of, you know, reducing weight or, you know, getting less ill, we've, we've just put weight on and now we've got, you know, serious illnesses. We've got like type 2 diabetes, we, we, you know, we're overweight, we've got heart issues, we've got, you know, problems with our breathing and all of that because our organs are being clogged up. The organs are being saturated with these fat cells. Even if you're not big, even if you're skinny, I know, you know, I'm not, you know, fat or skinny, but you've still got, it's still clogging up your arteries. I mean, if you, if you put a fat person, you know, or an overweight person under a scanner and a skinny person, yeah, and, and but what you'll actually find is both of them are suffering with the same fat cells. They're both their body is consumed by you know these fat cells that are you know over overriding our organs. So even if you think you're skinny and you're getting away with it, trust me, you're not. You know there's this thing called skinny fat. I mean you can Google it and have a look at it. But you know a lot of this data is being squashed by you know the big food corporations and. You know, no one wants you to know the truth, but, you know, for someone like me, I campaign for the truth. You know, I'm more than happy to stand up at any government level and, and, and tell them the truth, you know, whether they want to, whether they want to listen or not. Because eventually when enough people complain and enough of the information gets out there, you know, governments will have to change. I mean, there is, you know, government are trying to do what they can, you know, reduce sugar. I mean, I think they've got like a 20 year campaign to reduce something like 30% of sugar in food. Well, 20 years, how many people have got to suffer for the next 20 years? And 30% reduction in, in the food we consume is going to make no difference because, because you know, addiction is addiction. Whether it's 30% less or 50% less, it could be 80% less. See, you know, you can get that chocolate now that's 80%, you know, cocoa or whatever, you know, but 20% of it has still got that highly addictive substance. So, you know, it's just, it's, you know, even if you just consume small amounts of sugar, you've still got what we call this constant hunger. So even when you, 
eat you know savory food we tend to overeat because we're not feeling the hunger that is for processed sugars now processed sugars just like nicotine or caffeine or alcohol these are what we call additional hungers now now savory food normal food just doesn't feed that hunger you know the only feed thing that will feed a caffeine hunger is, is caffeine itself the only thing that will feed a nicotine hunger is nicotine you know and processed sugar you know believe it or not sits as an additional hunger so so savory food doesn't even fit it and so this is what happens we, we're tending to overeat we're we're overeating with normal you know someone says well i can't stop eating pasta well what, what do you think happens with pasta when it goes into our body? It turns into sugar. It's like, you, you know, all of these white breads and white pastas and white rice and stuff, you know, and, and trust me, I still consume it. I'm not, I don't stay away from all foods. You know, I'm not this, you know, you know, uh, gooder than gooder person, you know, but what I recognize is these highly addictive drugs. And, you know, and when we talk about our highly addictive foods, so when we talk about chocolate, crisps, biscuits, cakes, puddings, ice cream, sweets, all the things that, you know, you give to your kids, you give to your parents, you give, you know, you enjoy, you, you relish that moment when you when you have that ice cream and stuff. But what you've got to realise is, is as good as it tastes and as wonderful as it makes you feel, we're actually poisoning our body. now. And, and again, I'm not trying to get everyone to stop consuming these products listen if you don't have a problem with it if you're not overweight if you're not too concerned about your health you know and you're just getting the pleasure from it then just keep consuming it you know absolutely you know i've got a 10 year old boy do i stop him having ice cream absolutely not you know if he wants to when he's a bit older make a decision that you know dad you know what i, I you know i understand about this sugar i'm going to make a decision not to consume it well then that would be his choice but so i'm not um you know, and then party, you know, sucking all the, you know, the good out of everything. You know, I want people to enjoy themselves. I want people, you know, to, to you know, life is very short. You know, when if you understand, you know, my story, life is very short uh, and you need to make the very best of it that what we've got. Yeah. And so, you know, what I tend to do is I help people that want to be helped. If you want help, then, you know, come and find me um, and, you know, I'll show you a process. And I'll empower you to be able to make that change. Um, sorry, Will, you were going to ask me sorry, a question. I was going to ask you a question. I don't know what's happening there. What's happening there? I've been I've got a bit of an echo on you. Hopefully that's... Hopefully that's... You sound all right this side, I think. Sorry about my cup as well. <laughs> oh, just a, a subtle plug, yeah. Um, for some reason, my uh, on my side, it's like giving me an echo, but we'll try and work for it anyway. So, a, a few things that you you mentioned there, and we're going to go into them in a minute anyway. So, um, but the th first thing that I'm going to start with is what is an addiction? So, because yeah. there's lots, there's lots of people, myself included. Yeah. I know I'm partial to a, a, a galaxy bar or two, right? And I, I know that I'm partial to a beer or two. So at what point do you as the addiction experts, there's probably a lot of people on this call right now going, well, yeah, I like a bit of ice cream and I like a sliver of chocolate and oh, actually, but but does that mean that I'm an addict or does that mean I just like it? So what's what's your definition of of an of an addict? Right. So so I I, I really dislike that word addict, you know, because what it, what that is, is a label. And, you know, once you've given a label, then you become the victim. Oh, I'm an addict. This is why I do what I do. Right. You know, to me, there's no such thing as an addict. What addiction means is that your mind and body have become addicted to. Now, now that could be a substance that could even be an activity. When you actually think about that word addiction, we are all addicted to something, so, but it doesn't have to be a substance. You can be addicted to your job. You can be addicted to your kids, your wife, your car, you know, your stamp collection, your, I don't know, rock, you know, climbing trees. I don't know. Whatever you do in life, once you get pleasure from something, you know, this mind, this very, very sophisticated mind, once you, you know, experience something that makes you feel good, your mind would tick a box. And once the mind ticks a box, you know, technically it has become an addiction because what addiction means is you've created a want and a need to do that activity. Now, you know, in life, there's some really, really good addictions if you want to class it as an addiction. 
you know, there's really good things to do, but then there's really bad things to do. But what we have to work out is what are the good and what are the bad. Now, when we consume ice cream and, and chocolate, you know, we we understand that we get good. It's you know, it, and it gives us pleasure, makes us feel good, a little bit of comfort. So, so all of the time it's good, then we don't need to question it. But for everyone that's you know weight conscious or you know has maybe got a little bit of low self esteem or something. You know, we know that every time we consume one of these foods, we know that we're adding the weight on. We know that it's not a good thing, but it's like that, you know, that little secret that, you know, we, you know, we understand how it makes us feel. So, so, so to answer your question, you know, it may come as a shock for everyone, but every single one of you, every single one of us, we have an addiction to something. It's just... Is it a problem or is it not? But let me just say that you are not an addict. No one is an addict. You know, all it is is that either, you know, it's not either. It's just that your mind and body have become addicted too. So, you know, I spent 20 years addicted to drugs. So I was, a, you know, a smoker, a drinker, you know, a recreational drug user. You know, I even, you know, went for a spell of, you know, taking crack cocaine and smoking some heroin. You know, I went, you know, the full circle. So... But was I an addict or was it that my mind and body became addicted to? So it's always the latter. It's always that my mind and body became addicted to. Because when you understand this model, this model that I teach about the mind and the body, you will actually realize that, you know, you consciously, and, and when I talk about us consciously, it's, 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 you know, me talking to you, it's you listening to me. This is us in this present moment. But, but behind us is this, is, is our mind. You know, you can call it your mind, your subconscious mind, you know, your um, uh, unconscious mind, whatever you want to call it. But this thing here is working completely independent to you. Even like my physical body, my, you know, my physical body is independent to me consciously. And, and you know, you're going to go, well, what do you mean? No, this is me. This is, I'm a whole. But, you know, when you actually, like, well, just think about it for a second. Look. You know, when you get hunger pains, what, what's happening? Your body is instructing you to go and get some food. When you, when you have a thirst in your throat, your body is saying to you, you know, when you reach for a drink, you're not reaching out of choice. You're reaching because you've got a thirst. Your body's saying, it's time to give us some water. It's time to, you know, give us some food. You know, when you're sitting there, you know, three o'clock in the morning watching your Netflix, you know, and you, you, you know, your head's doing this because your body's saying, Chris, it's time to go to bed. And you're going, just one more, one more. <laughs> just <laughs> one more episode <laughs> of Suits. <laughs> you know, you know, but your body's trying to tell you something, you know, and that's what we've got. And that's what we've had all our lives, really. We've had a mind and a body that have been trying to guide us, trying to instruct us. You know, your mind and body are a safety mechanism. You, you know, it's there to keep you alive, you know. Every single one of us is breathing, okay? But none of us are controlling our breathing, you know? Even down to, you know, my breathing, you know, my mind controls it. Yes, yes I can hold my breath, look. You know, but in 60 seconds or 30 seconds, my, my mind and body are going to force me to breathe. Is it? I, I haven't even got a choice to stop breathing. I can hold my breath, but that's it. See, we, you know, consciously, we don't actually control a lot of things other than that we're the decision maker. You know, we, we are the person that experiences life and we, we make decisions. That's, that's our role as the conscious self. But everything else that's going on is happening behind us, you know, backstage, if you like, behind the scenes, you know, and that's what we need to understand. If you want to crack this code of life, if you want to overcome some, some sort of trauma in your life, it could even be a past experience, then you need to come into here. You need to, you know... Go to your mind as if it, it's someone or something, and then you have to ask for change. You know, and I know that sounds really strange. And you know, and, and someone says, "Well, what, what do you mean by that?" And well, I say, "Well, you need to talk to yourself." And what well, you want me to talk to myself? And I and I say, "Yeah, do you want to get better? Then, then yeah, you're gonna to have to talk to yourself." And you know, and that surprises people really. But when you start to understand it, and you understand the mechanisms that are going on behind us you will realize that self-talk is a very, very powerful tool. And, and if you want to take control of this, your mind, just like you've got control of everything else in your life, but, you know, be it that bar of chocolate or that ice cream or that, that temptation that you just can't say no uh, for, then, then there is a way to change it. And then, and, but it comes with 
you know, using self-talk techniques and doing a little bit of reprogramming the mind and, and you will be able to get your freedom. But, you know, when you take up something like this, I just need to make this clear. You can't mess around with the mind. If you're going to stop something, and that's really what it comes down to, are you going to continue or are you going to stop? Because if you want to just, I just, you know, most people say to me, can I just be like I was, just have a, you know, a few ice creams and, and not consume it on a daily basis? Can I just have it on my birthday or something? And, you know, as much as I want to say yes, you know, unfortunately the answer is no. See, if something has become a problem, you know, you're, you, you, you recognize it as a problem now, it will always be a problem. And, and these problems don't get better. They can only get worse. Like the, your, your consumption now can only increase. You know, the consumption of what you're, you know, be it chocolate or, you know, it can only increase um, and, and then your will becomes less. You know, that willpower, whatever you think, you know, we, we become weak, don't we? We believe that we're weak, but, you know, trust me, you're not weak. Every single one of you is very, very strong-willed, but you have to understand it. You have to understand the mechanisms to be able to take control. But, again, this is what we teach in this model, you know, this very, very simple model, but once you understand it, you know, you won't need me anymore. You know, I just deliver the information. Once you've got these tools, then... Um, you'll, you, you know, you'll use them, but you know, the good thing is you're going to use them in other parts of your life. You know, because if you think about the mind, it's you know, very procrastinating mind. It's a very negative mind. You know, it's like I always call it like an over worried mother that sits, you know, there going, oh, don't touch that, don't do this, oh no, don't don't take them risks. You know, that's that's how the mind is. So so you have to understand how do I overcome that? How do I overcome the pro procrastination? How do I overcome the fear? and really make a, a change in my life and you know and that's what we do we do it on a on a daily basis now we do you know we run groups every single week um you know like i said we run these seminars retreats every single person that comes to us gets a life change and you know when we went to america you know we took over a hundred testimonials with us to america you know just dumped them on the, i said listen just you know there's something real happening here and you know it's not pharmaceutical led um and people are having massive life changes you know we need to take this program up we need to you know do some investigation i mean this is what happened I and mean, when i went to america they said you know this is fantastic but you said that you know we need data you, you know we only work by data we need all of these you know pie graphs and all of that we need you know, hundreds of thousands of people, like, you know, and so they said, listen, just go back, go back to N uh, your NHS and, and, and start the program in there and then come back and see us and, and then we'll deliver the funding. And, and that's exactly what I've done. You know, I came back to NHS, I delivered the model. Um, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster with, you, you know, who are you and, you know, how can you just, you know, have come across this, this, you know this you know this this thing that says that you can help people but you know we've actually you know got an agreement now with oxley's nhs trust it's a massive trust covers the whole of greenwich bexley and bromley um and we're about to test the model um so it's really fantastic news and it, what it means is we're going to help so many people so many people are going to get access to this information you know and they're going to start to change you know just not like lose it's not just losing weight you know, we talk about losing weight, overeating, but the people that are in our mental health wards are suffering with anorexia, bulimia, you know, serious mental health issues. You know, you think about the suicide rate in young people because they can't lose weight, because they've got, you know, serious food disorders and stuff like that. You know, as much as we think, oh, we want to look good, you know, there's a serious mental health issues that sit behind overeating, overconsumption of food, weight gain and all of that. So there's a lot of help that's needed but again this is you know this is the campaign that i'm on and um it's going really really well it's going so really just, well. To, so just to interject, interject, interject there, a couple of different things first of all you just said well who are you like they said well who are you just to turn up and and, and give us this information for those of you that don't know just very quickly would you mind just sharing your story with regards to your brother and, and that side of things because obviously it's something it's very evident even from speaking to you tonight you're massively yeah. passionate about this yeah. so it'd be good for other people to understand why you're doing what you're doing the reason behind it and i've got a couple of other questions yeah for you. i mean the, the whole reason i'm doing this and i never this wasn't 
what I was set out to do. It wasn't, you know, um, you know, I've, I've always, you know, when I left school, I didn't, le you know, I left with no real exams. I just messed about at school, didn't really want to be there. Um, I went into the body repair, like garage um, environment. I took up a trade, learned how to spray cars. Um, and, and But, you know, that growing up and, and was filled with addictions. You know, I was smoking from the age of seven, drinking by the age of 10. You know, the time I hit secondary school, we was, you know, smoking weed, um, you know, using solvents. Um, when I left school, you know, that was that era, that 1989 when, you know, we was, you know, there was the speed, the acid, the ecstasy. And, and, and of course, you know, after that comes cocaine and, and, and it's so relevant in, in, in our society. It, you know, you could walk into any pub, you know, throughout the country and find cocaine. You know, you always know the person that's got it because they're either their jaws going a bit funny or, you know, they're on a fruit machine or something, you know. So, um, and so, so we, you know, I was introduced very early, like 16 years old, you know, I was, you know, taking ecstasy, using cocaine very, very early on. And, and the other thing is, it, you know, you get sucked into that almost criminality, you get sucked into that gang culture, the football culture, um, and it can lead you to some really, really dangerous places. And, and you know, and that was my life. And, and, you know, I always knew, you know, as much as I was having a good time, there was always this dark side to it, you know, the, be it the money, be it the violence, be it, you know, all of the criminal activities that were going on around me. Um, and I always knew I needed to get out. It was just, but how do you get out? Because when you've got addictions, you're almost, everywhere you look, it's almost like you've got blinkers on, you know, it's the same people, it's the same places. You know, it's very hard to see a way out when you're when you're in the midst of it. So, but I took that chance. I took that opportunity, and I went in search of the answers. So, you know, when you know when I was ended up using crack and that, I was like, I got to get out of this. I was, you know, in crack dens with, you know, people. You, I never used needles, but I'm sitting around with needles around me and stuff. And I, I thought, what am I doing here? This is just, you know. But because I was, you know, addict, you know, the addiction. Uh, you, you know, it's very, very difficult to get out. But I, you know, I made a decision. I want to get out, and 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 I went on that journey. And you know, I first Paul, Paul went to the doctors. You know, give me some tablets. You know, I, did it work? It didn't work with me. You know, I went to some addiction groups. Um, I went to get some counselling. Um, I tried the hypnosis, done some hypnosis stuff. You know, I was even at one point paying this guy in Harley Street five hundred pound a time for him to secure me. He was the number one addiction expert in this country, but still couldn't fix me. So in the end, I had to take things into my own hands and, and throughout all of that, that was over like a space of like two or three years, just trying to get myself out. Um, I actually learned this thing about the mind. I was understanding this mind, this body, and it was, a, it was like a light bulb moment, realization one day that look, my problem doesn't exist out here. It doesn't even exist with these substances. My problem is coming from behind me. It's coming from a want and a need. It's coming from an emotion because there's me consciously saying I don't want to do it, but my mind and body were forcing me to do it. And when you start using things like, you know, crack cocaine, you, you will understand that the mind and body become very aggressive, you know, not aggressive to other people, but very aggressive to me, like very bad emotions, very like, you know, you like this all of the time and your only relief is when you take the drug. And and so, so it was that realization, that moment when I said, I'm going to take it into my own hands. And instead of looking outwardly, I turned around and I started to question this. And for the very first time in my life, I, I felt an emotional change. I felt that my mind was telling me not to look in here and, and trying to guide me back out here. But I refused to look back out there. And I said, no, we're going to sort the problem here. And, and then I opened up this thing that I teach now called self-talk. And I basically started to retrain myself. I started to question my thoughts, question my feelings, question my emotions. And, and one by one, I never done it all at the same time. One by one, I, you know, I got rid of the crack and, you know, smoking heroin. I, I got rid of that. I lost the want and need to do it. But I thought, you know, I'm still going to have a drink and a little sniff that, you know, cocaine sometimes. But, you know, what happens, that then raises its head as a problem. And, you know, I let go of the cocaine. I thought, I'm not going to stop drinking because I'm a geezer. I'm, you know, I'm not going to sit in a pub with a, a sparkling mineral, or am I? So, you know, but I hung on for alcohol for so long, you know, probably a, a good year. But, 
you know, unfortunately, I, I could never handle my drink, and you, you, you end up like that youngster again, you know, an adult in a pub falling about drunk, because we all know cocaine is that wonder drug that sobers you up. And so I became a drunk for a year, and, then, and in, in the end, I thought, I just don't want to live like this anymore. And, you know, so I ended up getting rid of alcohol. I ended up, you know, I went for the caffeine. And, and then after all those things, I actually realised I had a sugar addiction. And, you know, it was the last thing, you know, and I love cakes, you know, from my earliest memory. You know, I grew up with Mr. Kipling cakes and, you know, jam roly-poly. And, you know, if you think back to school dinners, I could never remember a school dinner, but I could tell you what the puddings were because it was just the best moment, wasn't it? You know, school dinners with, you know, jam roly-poly or apple crumble or, you know, it's just amazing things. Um, but I realised that I had a, a food addiction. And, and when I got rid of all these substances, all I could do was, was consume this food. I just wanted to, I was visiting two or three bakers a day. I was eating cakes and no one actually knew that I was eating them because I was ashamed about how many cakes I was eating. And, you know, in the end, I, I'm sneaking around as an adult, consuming food, feeling, you know, bad about myself, embarrassed, but I couldn't stop. And so in the end, you know, even though it tasted so wonderful and, you know, I grew up on these things, I actually just said, you know what, I don't, I just don't want any addictive substance in my, in my life. And, and I made a decision, but, you know, don't get me wrong, I still consume food that has some sort of sugars in it. It's very difficult to escape 100%. But I got rid of everything that was non-essential. I said to myself, what are the non-essential foods? It's the chocolate, the crisps, the biscuits, the cakes, the puddings, the ice cream, sweets. Thank you very much. They taste amazing but I don't want them in my life now. What I do is, is I feed my body with nutrition, but I don't eat for pleasure. And when I mean pleasure, I mean I, I'm not eating to get that chemical release. I now consume food for taste and nourishment, and now that I get my nutrition. Now, that was, you know, almost like 11 years ago, but unfortunately, this was three, almost four years ago now, I actually um, lost my brother to a drug overdose, and I was with him that night, um, he did, so we was at a reunion, a club reunion. It was 25 years since we'd gone clubbing in 1989. And he made the decision to, to take some tablets that night. He hadn't taken tablets in many, many years. I said to him, what's the point? There's no point. But he, you know, he said, no, I'm going to do it. I'll be all right. And unfortunately, you know, there's a longer story to this, but unfortunately, after 25 years of abusing your body with drink and drugs, his body just basically rejected the drug. Um, and it basically poisoned his blood. It shut down his system, his organs, and um, yeah, he just died. He just died that that night. So, and you know, and it was a terrible, terrible time. And you know, and it took a while. You know, I don't know. I, you know, I still feel the pain today. I still cry today. Um, but it was the realization that that I can't stand by. Not where I'd escaped from these substances, you know, being, you know, through the traumas and everything that I'd gone through. I realised that my what my purpose was and I knew, I knew what I had to do and I, I had to go and share the story. So I wrote the book, the book that you sh showed then, and, and then I opened up some help and support workshops. And ever since, I've been on a mission, really, to, to just help people that are struggling, help people understand these mechanisms that happen inside of us to you know to teach you a method that you don't have to sit and suffer if you've got an issue a problem i'm going to show you how and 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 that's what i've been doing and we've had hundreds of people through my workshops we've had thousands of people you know download my books and my plans and and as i say this is just the beginning you know 18 months ago was the beginning of this journey um, and, and, you know, my, you know, my goal is to help, you know, over a million people, you know, break free from addiction. And, and that's, that's what I'm doing. And then you've been doing you a job at it. Job at it. So, I, know this, I know this question, so I question. So I just want to attend these questions and then we're going to come back to something else I want to ask you, Chris. So uh, Ellis has said, um, interesting, do you eat sugar at all now then, Chris? Yeah. So, so I don't have those foods, but, you know, in, in all of the foods and drink that we consume, there's something like about 80% of it contains some sort of processed sugar. And so it's very, very difficult to escape it 100%. But all my, the way that I do it is I only eat food that's going to give me some nutritional value. If it's not going to give me nutritional value, I just don't eat it. You know, if we talk about drinks, I only drink like, that's like a herbal tea 
Um, I drink sparkling water with ice and squeeze, like freshly squeezed lemon in it when I go out clubbing and pubs. Um, but I don't drink sugary drinks. Um, you know, I don't um, have caffeine. But as far as the food, then I definitely don't have any kind of chop. Well, 100% chocolate. You know, you know, some people consume it. So. But, but I just don't have chocolate crisps, biscuits, cakes, puddings, ice cream, sweets. Now, there's alternatives that you can get now. You know, there's this sweeteners like stevia and, and there's a lot of bad press around some of it. But again, you know, I've tested um, food with stevia and, and, and other uh, sweeteners. And basically, um, you don't get a chemical release of dopamine when you consume them. So you get the taste, the sweetness but there's no chemical release of pleasure. So, so when they put sweetener in, it's not an addictive substance like processed sugar. So, 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 but I'm not telling anyone to go and swap. What I'm saying, you know, what my advice to people is, let's go on to as much as a natural food diet as you can. Get the nutrition because remember, what you're doing is you're fueling a vehicle. Your body is a machine. It's a vehicle. And what your body needs is nutrients to create energy. The more energy you have, the more you will be able to enjoy life. And that's what this is about. Consume food for nutrition, create the energy, create the happiness, the internal joy. You know, when you haven't got addictive substances in you, your body is in a calm. You know, when we've got addictive substances, your body's like this. It's like it's, it's almost that trauma that's going on. And it's only calmed by you consuming these foods. But, you know, we understand that foods only last for a short while and then we're back to you know, that, that trauma again. So it's, 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 it's a matter of, you know, creating that inner happiness, that inner joy, you know, and once you create inner happiness and inner joy, it then spreads to the, to the outside and, and you know, it, it has, a dra you know, an immense um, a change in your life for the good. So jo Jody's asked, which is maybe the opposite. Well, in, interesting is, is the opposite side of, of what, what could happen when you cut something out. So she said in the past, she's been obsessed with health, cutting out sugar and processed foods to the point that it created paranoia and anxiety around having the tiny little bit here or the tiny little bit about there. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then and then obviously it might be the complete flip side to that, where then she's eating lots as opposed to having a a happy a, a happy healthy medium, um, in that respect. So it's either like you cut everything out, and then there's the paranoia and the anxiety, or it's yeah, the it's, other a, side. it's a it's a really good question. I mean, for someone to cut out all the processed foods and all the sugars, there's you know there's not too much left, is there? So so again. You try. And, you need to be sensible about this. Look, what you need to do is, is try not to restrict yourself. You know, the decisions that we make are are lifestyle changes. They're not diets. You know, at no point for the rest of your life would you ever need to consume chocolate crisps, biscuits, cakes, puddings, ice cream, sweets ever again. You, you know, there there is no need for it. It's just we've created a want and a need. But see, what most people do is they use what we call the willpower method. OK, so they try to will themselves away from 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 what the mind and body are wanting. And that alone, if you're using willpower, causes trauma. It causes anxiety, it causes that that feeling of a void, something missing, like a loss. OK, and, and no one wants to feel a loss. If you start to feel a loss, it means something's going wrong. See, I don't use willpower. The, me the method that I use is a reprogramming. See, once you reprogram the mind, once the mind is attuned to what it is that you want, then you lose the want and need. There's no trauma. There's no anxiety around this. But you have to use this program. And you know, and, and I, you know, I'm not saying there's not other programs out there, but this is the only one I know that gives you the detachment. That you get a physical detachment, so you can see the food. You know, you can remember what it looked like, but there's no emotional, you know, that that pull towards it. If you've got no emotion around it, then you don't need to pick it up. And 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 that's not a trauma. That is what you call freedom. And if you can get your freedom around some of these addictive foods, then then brilliant. Yeah, yes, I still consume some sort of processed food sometimes, but you know, generally, you know, I, I eat a natural food diet as much as I can. And so and so and by that, I mean, you know, fresh vegetables, you know, potatoes, meats, you know, fish, all of these things, 
are, are very, very good for us, yeah? Although saying that, I don't actually, you know, I, I'm a pescatarian, I think they call it. So I eat fish, but I don't eat meat. But again, that's just my personal choice. But I'm saying there's so much natural goodness in food that we, we, we forget about it. And we just, we go for the quick way out. And that's the sugary food, the quick snacks, the, you know, anything that contains some sort of processed sugar, we know we're going to get immediate hit and we OD on it. So, so then we don't even need other food. So we probably, you know, sometimes consume less food and we're thinking, oh, well, this is brilliant, but it's not brilliant because that food that you're consuming is turning into fat cells. I, I think I never finished the story about, you, you know, where they took the fat out and put the sugar in. See, see, science is changing. It's turning around. See, fat is good. See, what, that, what we didn't realize is fat doesn't turn into fat, but sugar does. Sugar turns into fat cells, and that's why we have an obesity. But fat doesn't turn into fat. You just have to burn that fat off, yeah? So, so science is turning around now, and, and it's, it's, you know, it's coming like full circle. But again, how quickly will the public get the information? I don't know. What you've got to do is you've got to start taking things into your own hands. You've got to, you know, you're not going to get the, 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 the truth from our government or from health officials. You know, you're going to get a half truth. But what we've got to do is we, we need to get rid of these substances, get rid of them as soon as possible. You know, please start some sort of exercise plan that we, you do some sort of exercise every single day. Get your heart rate going, even if it's for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. If you can get your heart rate going, get yourself breathless every single day. What you do is you kickstart your metabolisms, you kickstart that fat burn, and you create more energy. And isn't that what we want? We want more energy. We want to feel good. We want to look good. We want to know that we're consuming the right food. And it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing, as long as you know that you're doing the right thing. And that's all that really matters in this life. How do you feel? You know, if you feel good, brilliant. Keep doing what you're doing. If you feel bad, all right, come to us. Let's make a change. And that's what we do. So one other question we've had so far, which is from Kate, and um, I, I don't, she, she said, you may have said this, but I don't think we have, is do you work with children or campaign for healthy choices around them based on understanding your model? So she mentioned one of the things that is, um, is really important is teaching this message to, to youngsters, young people about their, their food choices. Like for example, one of the things she gets frustrated with is school dinners. And like they, she said that she got a letter home from her children's school saying they're serving a, 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 a nuggets and chips and ice cream as a treat. And 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 she was saying sort of her views on on sort of teaching children this. So she was just interested to know: if, are, are your is your model being taught to yeah, children? Really, basically? really good. So so quick answer to that: No, it isn't reason it isn't is because be it at government level and that it's still not recognized as an addictive substance so they're still not recognizing it as being harmful to kids to be honest sugar is the only addictive substance that is that is um by law allowed to be advertised directly to our kids so so we've got addictive substance being actively advertised to our kids so you know, and that's coming from government level, you know, just be, you know, a few, a few months ago, we actually got in touch with the Jamie Oliver Foundation, you know, the one that doing the sugar campaigns in schools and everything. And we said, look, we'd love to join your campaign, talk about the addictive substances and stuff. And we did get like a little bit of a firm letter back saying, saying, you know, we do, we don't support the addictive um, argument. We, we just want to help with the reduction. And so, and that's really pretty much what's coming out of government and, um, and even in America, it, it's, it's still not really, it is being recognized, but it's still, it, it's not really making any difference. You know, the, the government plan is, is a 20 year reduction in sugar. You know, as much as you want to fight against the schools and, and, and the, the, the teachers and stuff, what you're probably going to be fighting a losing battle. I mean, please do the campaign. Our job is really for the education. Let's educate our, educate yourself first, you know, around, you know, sugar, you know, just look it up on the internet. There's so many different um, um, articles and that now, you know, I was just part of a sugar summit with, you know, around 25 of the world experts in, in, in sugar addiction. So, so there is a big voice out there, but, your job as a parent is, is to educate yourself, make some changes yourself, and then educate your children. But please don't try and force it on your children. You know, 
the best way to help someone is to change yourself and then someone else will see that you've changed and it will give them, you know, it will encourage them to make a change themselves. But all the time we try and force it on people, you know, it has the opposite effect and, and then people rebel and uh, then they want to consume more and, and then walls go up and it's very, very difficult to get through. So my advice for any parent is, is to change your behaviours around certain foods and then try to educate your children but try not to force it on them but just try to do the education. And, and as far as the schools and that are concerned, you know, raise the subject. You know, schools have a responsibility for the health, health of our kids. And so, you know, by, you know, you've got more than a right to, to, to complain, um, but you, you, if you're only the one voice, then, then I, don't know, you'd, I don't know, you would need to just get a few parents together and, and, and maybe have a discussion one day. But, but it is happening. The world is changing, okay? Just like it changed for nicotine, and smoking, the world is changing around um, sugar. It's just, you know, it will just take a bit of time. But for now, let's, you know, get you changed and, and then if we move on from there. Perfect, thank you, Chris. And hopefully, Kate, that answers um, your question. I don't think it's been any other questions so far. So here's the thing that I'm interested to know then. So the things that I've sort of made my notes um, on, on this so far is there's a few few different things that you've mentioned with regards to addiction. So I, I very much understand the principle of being an addict. If you give someone the label addict, it becomes an identity. It's got a negative connotation to it. So there's lots of negativity around that. Essentially, what you're saying is that um, people get addicted to as opposed to being an addict, which is the first thing to understand um, or one of the things to understand, should I say, that, that essentially, like you said, there's the model of, of life and it's understanding the difference between the mind and the body as two separate entities and um, and, and understanding that. And then there's a difference bet um, between this process. So you mentioned this process of sort of unticking a box and rewiring or unwiring yourself from having this, this uh, addiction yeah. To want to get this dopamine hit from taking a substance, whether that substance is sugar, caffeine, alcohol, alcohol recreational drugs, cocaine, you name it, whatever it is. So it's a process of unticking. So, and, and one of the things that you mentioned was self talk. So I understand the power of language, and you talk about this process. So if there's people that are watching this right now and they're going, well, do you know what? Actually, yeah, you're right. I, I do. I have that bit of chocolate um, or whatever the, the, the substance may be for them. And then I want that little bit more and that little bit when I have those cravings where I just can't stop. And it's like I, I do whatever it takes, knowing that I'm going to have a I'm going to feel negative towards it afterwards. What is the process to people? What What is the things that they need to be doing? I appreciate it. Maybe sort of five minutes. They're not, it's not going to be the process of what you're doing your whole workshop. But what is essentially the process of I mean, what happens? The, the, quick, the quickest way to understand this and, and, and you know, uh, even though we do paid seminars and retreats and everything. All of the information I teach is free. It's free for everybody. So if you go onto my website, beatmyaddictions.com, you will actually see that there's a free seven-day addiction plan. And if you download that plan, that is all of the information that you're going to need. It's the full process of how do you understand the mind and the body? How do you reprogram it? How do you make some decisions? Talk, I talk a lot about withdrawal. So once you make a decision, there has to be a physical withdrawal that you have to go through. But it's all about coming out of your comfort zone. It's about experiencing something new, something that's going to make you a bit nervous, something that's going to, you know, be a bit on edge. But once you sit in that feeling for a, for a short period, all of a sudden your comfort zone enlarges around those decisions and then it becomes your comfort zone. And, and so that's the process I take. Um, so it's an educational process, you know, and it takes for you to – to actually put yourself out there. You know, there's no magic wand out there. There's no, you know, Chris is waving a magic wand and I'm gonna lose like three stone, you know, look good and feel good. It's gonna, it's gonna take a bit of work, you know, but you, it took a lot of work to put the weight on. So it's gonna take a little bit of work to get it off. But, but there's a process and it's, you know, when we talk about life change, we're not talking about diets or anything. As long as you follow the process and, and you're hundred percent sure that this is what you want, then you will get exactly what you're asking for. And that is a freedom, a freedom from these addictive substances, you know, an inner peace, an inner happiness, an inner joy. You're going to look good. You're going to feel good. You're going to have more energy. Um, but you have to follow this process. I, I, you know, I have to be really, really 
you know, strong about this. There is a process that has to follow. You know, as much as you might have enjoyed this talk, and you go, right, that's it, I'm not going to have chocolate anymore. You know, you're still basically be using a willpower method. And I don't want this to be a struggle. You know, I'm not saying it's a walk in the park, but I want this to be as easy as, as possible. Now, now I know Will's going to ask me about this, but um, I'm just going to tell you, look, on this, that, this weekend, okay, we put these events on every six months. Um, we're actually doing a two-day seminar in, in London, okay? So it's Saturday and Sunday. It's 9 till 5 on the Saturday, 10 till 5 on the Sunday. And we're basically going to change around 150 people's lives. So we get 150 people into this hotel in London. Um, it's a Holiday Inn, Bloomsbury in Russell Square. It's a beautiful hotel, but, you know, fantastic venue to do this. And for two days, I'm actually going to teach this model. So for, for day one, we, we teach about the food, the overeating, the sugar, you know, the, the um, caffeine and stuff. Then we teach about anxiety and stress, about our emotions, our feelings. Then we're going to talk about alcohol and recreational drugs. But really, the whole thing is a personal development. You know, it's understand the mind, understand how you take control of it. And that's what we're going to do day one. And then day two... <laughs> My dog starts barking. <laughs> so, so day two is what we call the change day. And so everyone that's fearful out there, everyone's going, oh, I don't think I could do it. I don't know how to do it. Perhaps if I do it wrong, I'm going to fail. What we're going to do is we're going to take 150 people step by step how you make a change. And there's about three or four different exercises that we run through day two. And on day two, we actually make that change there and then. And, and it's it's an incredible experience, especially, you know, we do it on these retreats where we take people away. We only take eight people away at a time, but this time we're doing it on a, on a mass scale. And when you watch 150 people change in a room all at the same time, it's going to be really, really powerful. And, and we end with like a visualization and a meditation at the end. And then we go into what we call a 10 day withdrawal. And, and that's what this seminar is now. I'm going to do, like everyone on here, we've got like 11 people. So 11 people, if you've got access this weekend and you've got access to get into London and spend two days with me, then this is what I'm going to do. If you look on my website, beatmyaddiction.com, you'll see the, the seminar. It costs £97 per person. But what I'm actually going to do for the 11 people here or whoever's watching this on the replay, if you are, uh, up until Saturday, I'm actually going to gift you a free ticket to bring a friend and I'm also going to gift you, I've got an online course, which is £97 plus the VAT. It's about 116 quid. You can check it out on my website. I'm actually going to give you that free because that will be your backup. That will be your guide when you come out of this withdrawal. And you get that online course for life. It's my whole life's teachings all in one place. And so you will experience just this amazing weekend and you'll have this online course and you can bring a friend all for £97. It's, it's an absolute steal. And when you actually think about it, when you actually make a life change, something that changes, gives you that feeling of happiness and joy, well, that is absolutely priceless, isn't it? So so I'd, I'd love for you to come. If you're, you know, you're still unsure, then talk to Will. You know, come on. You can email me at uh, chris at beatmyaddictions.com. Um, but as I say, we only put these on every six months. Other than that, I'm just touring the country or touring the world as um, uh, Will knows, um, just spreading my message. But um, I'd really love to see any of you. And if it's not you, then, you know, please invite a friend or a family. I will gift you, if it's come through this, through this webinar, then I'll gift you or your friend or a family member the same deal. But as I say, this thing starts on Saturday, so you haven't got long to decide. Um, but in a way, it's probably better that way because the more that you think about it, the more the mind will create procrastination and fear and then you probably won't make the change anyway because that's how this life is working at the minute. The mind is controlling us, the body is controlling us and the mind doesn't want you to stop eating chocolate or chocolate or sweets or ice cream. Your mind wants you to keep consuming it until, you know, unfortunately we might get one of them terrible health problems and, and then maybe it's too late. So, so look, listen, you know, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help and... Um, and thank you for Will for allowing me to share with your amazing um, um, crowd because what you do, Will, is inspirational as well. And, you know, I've come to your talks and I've seen the way that you help other people and, you know, and I'm always happy to share 
uh, you as a public speaker, as a mentor, you know, as a, a coach. So well done for what you're doing because you're inspiring people up and down the country as well. So it's, a, it's brilliant. That's why we connected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. No, thank you. Very, very kind world. So, uh, very, very grateful for you for, for the kind of for the people that are watching this. And then no doubt there'll be the people that are in willpower that will come back and watch this at a, at a later date. So is there a link specifically they need to get that special? Oh, just just beatmyaddictions.com. Once you purchase a ticket, then just, just contact me, chris at beatmyaddictions.com, and I will send you all the links to the online courses, the links to, to bring a friend, and um, I'll give you all of the information that you need for this weekend. Okay, cool. Um, so in, in summary then, so again, thank you very much. And um, in terms of the, the things, so what I've done is I've posted Chris's website and I've posted the link to his seven-day um, Beat My Addictions program, the, the PDF, which is free to download. I've, I've read through it myself before and there's, there's loads of value there. So I highly, I highly recommend it. If you're one of those people, get on that link. I've posted it in the community already. So you've got the ability to, to go through that and learn more about that. And obviously, if you are interested, then by all means, um, come to, to Chris's event. So just to be clear, Chris, so for the people that are watching this, these, these 12 people that are watching this right now and the people that are coming back and watching this, um on the uh, watching it that are in willpower what's the what's the, the what is it that they right. get just to be clear so, so the, if you if you purchase a ticket for for this week for this weekend seminar which is 97 pound i'm going to gift you an extra ticket completely free so you can bring a friend bring a family member but i'm also going to gift you my online course which you know in itself is more than the ticket to the event okay it's, the prices are all there on my website so it's £97 plus the VAT for that, but I'm going to gift you that free. So you're not even going to pay any VAT. All you're going to pay is £97 on the dot for a two-day seminar, which is going to change you know, your perspective on whatever it is that you wanted to change. I'm going to help you make that life change. You're going to help a friend make that change, and you're going to have the stability of a, a lifelong online course um, that, that will be your backup for, forevermore. So... It's a really, really good deal, you know, if you consider, you know, the creation of happiness inside of you is priceless. What, you know, what price do you put on your happiness? You know, is it, is it, is it less than 97 pounds, you know? So uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, you don't even, really even need to question it really. Look, I, I know it's, when someone pays money, you have to put your faith in something. You know, you probably only see me for the first time, but, you know, just, Sometimes you just have to put a bit of faith in something, you know, even though you might have a bit of anxiety, just put the anxiety to the side and say, do you know what? I ain't got anything to lose. I've been suffering for a few years now. Why don't I give it a go? At £97, is it worth risk? I think so. Let's just take a little trip into London for a couple of days and see what this guy's all about. And, you know, and if you do get that life change, it will be the best £97 you'll ever spend. And the good thing is, once you learn this model, you're going to teach it to someone else, yeah? And how would that feel that you had a hand in changing someone else's life, changed their road, which might have been taken down a really bad place, and, and you, you set them on a path of, 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 of happiness and joy. And every single one of us, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, you know, it, black or white, it makes no difference. Addiction affects every single one of us. We all know someone in our circle of family or friends, someone that is suffering, you know, you know even Will... You know, as, as been, you know, passed some people over to me and just said, look, you know, you need to come and speak to my mate Chris because, you know, as much as I'm a coach and that, you know, I don't do this addiction stuff and, and he's the expert. And, you know, we really, really changed a lot of people's lives. And, and just don't think that your case isn't good enough. Don't ever think that you're not, oh, I'm not as bad as that. You treat, you know, the people that are worse, I'll, I'll be all right. No, this is your life. And it's time to change. It's time to make the difference. Only you can make the difference. If you're waiting for something to come along and, and, and you just jump on it and, it, you know, you're going to be waiting forever. It's, it's time to make that change now. As much as on an emotional level, you're never going to be ready for change. But this is why you have to just, you know, you have to just go, I accept the way I feel. Boom, I'm just going to do it. Because once you buy a ticket, guess what can't stop you anymore? Your mind cannot stop you from going. But all the time you haven't got a ticket, the mind can work its magic. It can work its power and it can just say, 
you know, we don't need that, you don't need that, you're fine, we haven't got a problem, let's just get back down the pub, let's get to that baker's, let's consume that food, you know, and, and that's how powerful the mind is. And, and I will show you over this weekend, you're actually going to come face to face with your actual mind for the very first time in your life. And it's a very powerful experience. And when it happens, then from that moment on, you're always going to know this secret. If it is a secret, you know, no one ever told me. I never, you know, I had to work it out for myself. But now I'm sharing this model. I'm sharing this realisation that there's something else going on. This mind is working independently. The body is working independently. And that is what's been guiding us all our lives. But we consciously, we know the difference between what's right and wrong. And it's time to take back that control. And, and that's what I'm doing. I'm giving back control. I want you to have the control. And even if it's not you on this in this webinar, then I'll gift this to your friend or family as long as they say, my friend was on Will's webinar, can you do that deal that you said I'd give to my friend? And I will honour that deal. You've only got a few days, but we're Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just three days and, and then it, then it, that's it. But then, we're, then we're off and running and if you're there, brilliant. If not, then, you know, come and find me again in six months or something or just, you know, go onto one of my programmes online and, 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 you know, you can do this. Every single one of you has got the power to do this. If you're still walking and you're still talking, then you can do this, I promise. Cool. All cool. Right. All right. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. We need to get, get wrapping up, wrapping up, wrapping up there. That's, um, that's, that's, great. Great. that's great. If anybody does have any other questions, post them in the Elite Network community and either myself or Chris can be answering them. Um, but I hope you guys have found that of value. Again, remember to download his seven-day program. It's completely free. Obviously, if you are interested in going along to the uh, the event this weekend, then by all means, head to the website and uh, find out more about it there. So I just want to say a huge thank you to Chris and um, thanks for coming online and, and sharing what you shared with us this evening. That's fantastic. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of you guys that are watching this, wherever you're watching, very soon. So thanks very much, guys. See you soon. Until next time. Make it happen.